tonight, I'm stargazing. Have you ever looked for stars in the night sky? They look like lots of little bright dots, don't they? And sometimes, they even twinkle. But what are stars? And why can we see some of them twinkling in the sky? Do you know how starlight works? Let's find out. How does it work? out about stars and starlight, I've come here to a planetarium. A planetarium can show us pictures of the sky at night and the pictures are projected onto this huge curved ceiling. It's called a dome. It's a bit like going to the cinema. Should we see it in action? This is Colin. It's Colin's job to look after the planetarium and turn on the projectors which project the pictures onto the dome. <laughs> Let's go, Colin. Wow. <laughs> look how many stars there are in the sky. That is amazing. Stars make patterns in the sky called constellations. A constellation is a group of stars that make a big picture when you join them together. This one is called Leo and it's known as the Lion Constellation. This one is called Pisces. We call it the Two Fish. Shall we see if we can find some? Look, over there, can you see three stars in a row? They're in a diagonal line. Right in the middle. Oh, look, there they are. Let's count them. One, two, three. Those three stars are called Orion's Belt. And if we join the stars together, they look a bit like a belt, don't they? Over there is another constellation. It's got seven stars and it's called the plough. I think it looks a bit like a saucepan with a bendy handle, don't you? <laughs> to find out why we can see the stars at night, I think we need to take a closer look. When we look up at space, we see the stars as dots of light. In space, there are lots of particles of gas and dust floating around. When something big happens in space, like an explosion, together into a ball. The ball of gas and dust gets heavier and heavier. It collapses, pulling in more gas and dust particles. All the dust and gas starts to spin really quickly. And as they squeeze together, they get really, really hot. This makes a star. And because the star is really hot, it lights up. And we see the starlight twinkling in the night sky. Wow, that was so interesting. Did you know that our sun is a star? Other stars in the sky look really small, don't they? But the sun is really big. That's because the sun is much closer to the Earth than the other stars. Let me show you how it works. We must never look directly at the sun as it might harm our eyes. So this torch is going to be our sun. Oh, did you hear the sound when I turned it on? It made a click, didn't it? When we see the torch close up, it looks really big. But if I stand further away... Now it looks much smaller! Because the sun is close to us, it looks bigger than other stars in the sky. But actually, there are stars out in space that are much, much bigger than the sun, but they look smaller because they're further away. But to see those stars, we need to wait until it's night time. So we can see them even better, I'm going to use one of my special cameras. This is a telescope camera. And a telescope helps us to see things that are really far away, close up. Oh, wow. Look, can you see the moon? 
we can only see a small bit of the moon tonight. And it looks orange. Oh, wow. Can you see those stars in the sky? <gasps> that is brilliant. Whoa. It looks like it's glowing, doesn't it? Well, that's because stars are really, really hot and they give out lots of light. That light travels from the star through space to us here on Earth, and that's why we can see it. How great is that? I loved finding out how starlight works. What was your favourite bit? Can you remember what we call the patterns that stars make in the sky? That's right, they're called constellations. Did you hear the sound my torch made when I turned it on? And did you see the stars in the night sky with my special telescope camera? I love to look at the stars when it's dark outside, but when I'm inside, I like to relax. And sometimes I watch films. My favourites are animation films, like cartoons. Oh, hello. This is a flip book. Can you see? Each page has a picture on it. And when the pages are turned quickly, the pictures look like they're moving. Just like my flip book, an animation film is made up of lots and lots of pictures. Some animations even use puppets. It's called stop frame animation. But do you know how stop frame animations are made? Let's find out. How is it made? Stop frame animation. To find out how a stop frame animation is made, I've come here to an animation studio. To make a stop frame animation, we start with this. This is called a puppet, but inside the puppet is one of these. It's called an armature, and it helps to make the puppet move when we make a stop frame animation. It looks a bit like a skeleton, doesn't it? Hello. And just like our skeleton, the armature helps the puppet stand up and move. But to make stop frame animation, you need more than just a puppet. We need a background for our animation, like these houses. This is called a set. This is George, and George is an animator. It's his job to move the puppet and take photographs. And the photographs will be used to make the stop frame animation, just like our flipbook. Today, George is going to animate the puppet so it walks along the street and then throws the ball up and down. <laughs> Look, George is attaching the ball to its very own armature. It's called a rig and helps him hold the ball in mid-air. First, George arranges the ball using the rig and then he moves the puppet into its first position. Once the puppet's in the right position, George takes a photograph. And this is called a frame. To make a stop frame animation, we need lots and lots of frames. Each time George moves the puppet and takes a picture, the picture is saved to a computer. The puppet is going to throw the ball up in the air. So George moves the puppet's arms a tiny bit and then lifts the ball using the rig. And I'm going to help by taking the next picture. <laughs> that looks great, but it will take George about an hour to animate the puppet throwing the ball. So I'm going to film George using one of my special cameras. This is a time-lapse camera, which means we can film things that happen slowly, but when we watch them back, it happens much quicker. OK, I'm all set. George is moving the puppet a tiny bit before he takes each photo. Oh, that look great! And now George is moving the puppet towards the ball so he can pick it up and throw it away. And George is finished. Now all the pictures have been taken, they come here to an edit suite. Whoa! Look, here are all the photographs. Before Ed puts the photos together, we need to take out the rig. Can 
can see Ed is colouring out the rig, so it will look like the ball is moving on its own. It's a bit like rubbing out pencil with a rubber. And Ed needs to do this to every single frame for the whole animation. What else do we need to make our animation? Thank you. That's right. Sound. This is a microphone and it's going to record the sounds of me walking on gravel and bouncing a ball. A bit like this. These sounds will make the animation feel and look real. And it's so much fun. Sounds great, doesn't it? That was really fun. Can you see there's a bar on the screen? That's called the timeline. All the frames are on the timeline in the right order, and Ed is adding the sounds I just recorded from the microphone. When we make sound to match with pictures, we call it foley. Right, I think we should watch the finished animation on a big screen. Ready? Here goes. Look at the puppet! It's moving! Each frame that George made earlier on the set is being played back next to each other really quickly. So it looks like the puppet walks and the ball bounces all on their own. That happened really quickly, so let's watch it again. The puppet walks in, gives us a wave, sees the ball, gives it a bounce. all day to make just 15 seconds. All of those tiny efforts have been put together to make this stop frame animation. How nice is that? What did you like most about seeing how a stop frame animation is made? Do you remember what each photograph is called that makes up a stop frame animation? That's right, it's called a frame. I hear the sound my feet made as they walked on the gravel. It was a crunching noise, wasn't it? And did you see my special camera filming George making our stop frame animation? So, the next time you watch a stop animation film, you'll know how it was made. And when you see some stars twinkling in the sky, you'll know how we can see them on Earth all the way from space. <laughs> right, I think I'm going to do some more stargazing. I'll see you next time. There are lots of things all